this piece um, I want to bring to you is um, what I'm doing as a writer now is uh, I'm trying to recreate or to remember some of my experiences growing up in Spanish Town, Jamaica. And uh, what I've been doing is um, almost on a, not a daily basis now, but on a weekly basis, I just try and remember images, characters, like Sunday school, who was there, the teacher, the teacher who beat you, there were teachers who, would, oh God, I know, at a time, eh? Um, you know, the mango tree, um, you know, just, just, um, just, just, just bringing those images forward and then writing little poems or little narratives about them. And what I'm discovering is uh, there are a lot of values that I hold that are in these little um, vignettes or these little things that I remember, and maybe that's why I remember them. Um, and this poem I wrote for Jamaica's 50th uh, independence. I don't know who it means anything to. It meant uh, the British uh, basically left their official post, their colonel post, etc., and gave over Jamaica to uh, the lighter skins Jamaican. Um, but the economy was still tied up to supply England. And we still, I grew up doing all the exams, the same curriculum that everybody did in England and doing all the same exams. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, so this is around where I live and this is how we value the people we live with. And um, I've come to realize that in Toronto, especially in the AIDS crisis, that um, some of those values were very important in caring for the people around us. Jamaica, I remember. Sunday evening breeze, rice and peas, roast pork and chicken curry. We change from our Sunday school best. Frill socks turned so delicately down. Bata cha cha cha, so fully brushed to sparkle. The crepes canvas perfect white, grinning in the Sunday evening light. We pick up a canteen thermos for a medium-sized tin can, hook together, swing upon each other like a Jacob's ladder. Parboil and red beans, chicken back in yellow grease, okra, ground provisions. Dinner for granny, auntie, cousin, lovey, Hilda. Down the lane beside Philippa Baptist Church, Friend Street Corner, Spanish Town, close to Russian shop, cross from the Chinese man store, where the East Indian family grows Kalalu next door. <clears throat> so abundant tall, the guinea tree shadows, ever blooming limes and a small susumba grove, through banging broken wooden gate where the cistern hides, its pipe drip drips, drips, dripping. No matter how hard you tighten the trick, lock it off slight, just right, slow down, quiet, tip away, oh, sh, 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 sh. Or else it pours again to dance brush green, slime oh so lazily on the iron gray of the cistern's concrete. And we children, one by one, get our hugs from granny, auntie, cousin, lovey Hilda. Half blind, love some, a no tooted smile. Soft wrinkles jiggle and ripple and spark to laughter. How granny, auntie, cousin, lovey Hilda got her name? I couldn't say, but it seemed to have spurted and spurted with her age. We light up her day, her very existence. We think her grand aunt with a proper G, our granny, auntie, cousin, lovey, Hilda. Not connected by blood or marriage or relatives in common. She was only a woman who way back when, a child in my grandmother's childhood, made blood by passing time. Made blood by passing time. 